Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. How are you? Oh, man. Don't want to be in Hawaii. I know. Isn't it heartbreaking? That's so scary. And that's where I was just a few weeks ago. Was that, that I could have been you. You could well, have been an action movie star. Yeah, it was on. Oof. it's on the other side of the island where we were yeah. at. But still, it's like heartbreaking to see, just to watch. It's just oh, heartbreaking. It really is. And, you know, I, and, and to see, you know, when... When people's homes and livelihoods are endangered and, and lives are endangered through this, through an, when nature just sort of rears up and says, hey, I'm still here. Right. Uh, it's really terrifying. I mean, I remember watching my neighborhood burn to the ground, uh, my childhood neighborhood burn to the ground in Colorado. Um, you know, it's, it, it's from just. From a fire? Like from the yeah, forest fire? Yeah, from the wildfires. Yeah. Right, yeah. Just yeah. ravaged the state and California, uh, yeah. Too, Northern California. Uh, it's it's hard to watch friends and, and family struggle. So uh, you know, hearts uh, hearts are with them yes, for sure. Definitely. Um, and uh, so there we go. Uh, we are talking today. Uh, you know, I don't know if you just are are trolling me, or you're just testing to see if I can uh, keep my mouth shut on a topic long enough for you to get your pitch out. But I love this topic, and oh, it good. feels like a test. To oh, test no. for old Pete. No, it is can, not a test. I want oh, no. you to contribute anywhere and everywhere <laughs> you want. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty close to this topic. Is your to-do list too large? That's the principal question. But really, we're talking about how you manage your own expectations of your work and your uh, availability to work. That's what we're taking on today. Uh, and uh, so, you know, buckle up, make some soup, settle yeah. in. <laughs> Before we dig in, head over to TakeControlADHD.com, get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list. We'll send you an, an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And thank you to everyone who is supporting the show on Patreon at Patreon.com slash The ADHD Podcast. Uh, it, it is through your support that allows us to uh, look at new ways to grow the show and do new things and try new things and keep our equipment up to date and pay for production, all of those kinds of, of things. If we've ever touched you and how you live your life, we appreciate you considering uh, uh, supporting this show with a couple of bucks a month and uh, new perks are coming. We're figuring out some new perks and new levels and you know, it, it's a whole perk and level discussion. We're very excited about it. <laughs> perk and level. It's a, it's a work in discussion. progress. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Always perks, a work in progress. Levels. Right. Perks, levels, <laughs> rewards, whatever. It's great. Uh, and so thank you everybody <laughs> for, for being a part of, of what we do. We appreciate that. And if you were a supporter, you would be here right now watching the live stream of Nikki and I, goof around on youtube while we record this show yeah. uh and, and we love we love uh ha being able to engage with you guys uh in real time it's really really fun totally changes the the dynamic of the show so we appreciate that all right nikki kinzer is your to-do list too large it can be you bet <laughs> Yes. Well, and it's interesting because I've said this before, when a topic comes up more than once in a week, I have to pay attention to that, right? So not only did it come up with me because yes, my to-do list was too big and I had to separate what was really important and only look at the important things because everything else was like cluttering my mind. Um, but I've had a couple of clients ask me about this too. And, uh, and it was all in this week. So that's why I was like, you know, we're going to talk about this on the show because this is obviously on a lot of people's minds. And it kind of felt like a good transition to, because last week we talked about rewards, you know, how to get, um, how to get motivated on those things that you don't want to do. And then, uh, with summer, you know, coming really soon, it, a lot of people have a lot of projects that they want to work on. And so it just kind of made sense to, to talk about this. And, uh, but what's interesting to me is that the most common question that I get from clients and, and from listeners is how do I better manage my time to get all this done? So that's always the question is how do I, you know, how do I manage my time better? How do I make sure that um, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing? But that's not always just the issue, right? I mean, ADHD time is messy. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there are mm -hmm. some issues that we have to talk about with time management, but I think a really, a, a much more, um, 
well, a better question would be to, you know, are your expectations really balanced with the time that you have available? And, and like you said in the earlier, like, how do you manage those expectations? Yeah, right. And, and I think one of the interesting thing, the things that comes out of a, a smart, sort of well-managed basket of work, right, your, your work box is in balance, then you're better able to estimate for others. And so your whole ecosystem of contribution to the world uh, is it, it actually starts to, to, you know, make more sense and become more fluid. If you, you know, once you get some best practices in place, and you're able to sort of uh, live to them for a little while. So uh, I'm, this is a very important topic to me, um, for, for that very reason. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, so I thought that it might be uh, a good to review a little bit. I mean, I know that sometimes I'm, I'm I'm preaching to the choir. I mean, people know what the challenges are, but sometimes people don't understand that that's the ADHD part of their brain that's kind of working. They think that it's just them, right? That they're being lazy or something's wrong with them. So I think it's always important to kind of highlight how the ADHD affects your expectations. Um, and that's the, the overwhelm, you know, and pain of having to do everything. Like you really feel like all of these things are important. It's it, everything has the same value. Um, and it's really hard to, to prioritize. And we talk about prioritizing and, and that's tough. I mean, that's tough to do. Um, and then with ADHD, you have to remember too, that naturally you're going to be drawn to what you want to do, regardless of how important it really is. And, uh, and then you feel bad, you know, you feel bad later because the other stuff didn't get done. Um, and then if you follow kind of the ADHD time management protocol that you're taught, you're taught to brain dump, right? You're taught to get your ideas out of your head, all your to do's that you have to do and put it on paper. But the caution here, that's a double edged sword. If there ever was it one. is right. It's like, we got to yeah. get it out of our mind, but the, the thing to be caution, um, or to caution yourself, I guess is what I'm trying to say is this brain dump is not your to do list. Absolutely. That is a huge, huge uh, mis misinterpretation of the guide. Right. Uh, of that guidance. Yeah. Huge. Yes. yes. So we definitely don't want to keep it in your head, but we also don't want to use that as your tool to go forward. Uh, now, as I said, you know, ADHD time is messy. We know that. And we know like what you were talking about, the estimate estimation of time um, is not accurate. It's hard to, to estimate how long things are going to take you or what you should tell somebody, you know, that this is going to take you. Um, and, mo you know, the reality is that most tasks do take us longer than what we expect. So even if you start off the day really productive and, you know, you start working on something, you're making progress on one or two things, you're going to feel disappointed at the end of the day if you didn't manage those ex expectations correctly because you didn't get it all done. And you're going to feel like, well, I didn't get all of this done. And so, you know, it wasn't a good day because you only had a fraction of it done. But the, the reality is it was probably a super day. <laughs> Right. Exactly. You set the if you set the bar a little bit lower, suddenly you can you give yourself the opportunity to exceed it, to jump yes, over it. Yes, yes. And then you can really see the value of what you did get done. And that's something again that you really want to kind of um caution yourself of is that don't focus so much on what's left or what you didn't get to, but focus really on what you did get done. And it's such a more positive outlook, right? You're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to be in a better mood. You're going to be a happier person and, you know, let go of that guilt that, because really, honestly, I've seen some lists that I'm like, there's no per person in the world that could get all this stuff done that yeah, you're right. asking. To. You, yeah. you just clearly you look at a list and it, it just seems like, you know, you don't understand what how time works, right? Like you don't you can't you can't wield time like like your to do list imagines that you would do it. Yeah, yeah, you can't just magically yeah. extend the hours. <laughs> You know, yeah, and suddenly you have I have 28 hours in the day. Yeah. yeah, and you have to think about your energy and you have to think about, you know, are you tired? Did you work all day? Do you have kids at home? Do you have other duties that you have to do at home? Like, you know, you have to manage all of that during the day. And so we have to kind of look at look at all of that. And that's where we really um, I want to explore a little bit of the connection between your to do list and your daily schedule. Um, and so this is going back to one of those lessons that we've talked about before with time management, it's so important for people 
to look at their calendar every day. It's so important to look at your daily schedule on a day-to-day basis uh, because that is a visual for you of what's ahead of you, right? That's that giving you that time, that that yeah. time visual that you need to see. I know you're this, you're trying to say something. I'm gonna I, let you it's say killing it. me. It's killing me. <laughs> it is. It goes back to an executive functioning skill, right? And this is something that takes practice, and it's hard to do. But you, if you if you set yourself up right with the right visuals, especially for ADHD, um, you can really give. It's like walking around, you know, with bionic legs. Like you really start to feel like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm finally in control of my own activity. And, and it's we've talked about this before. You know, the difference between the analog watch and the digital watch, right. right? Or analog clocks and digital clocks. It's the same concept. You have to give yourself the benefit of seeing the passage of time, right? Just mm-hmm. seeing numbers on a clock do not give you that benefit. Seeing the dial go around, you can actually start to visualize the space. What does 15 minutes really look like? What does a half hour really feel like? And you can do that's why even though I'm I wear an Apple Watch, I actually keep the uh, the oh, analog right. time yeah. face on there because I have to see time pass. Right. Uh, and and that's huge. Same thing with a calendar. Even though my agenda comes up in Todoist and it's a list of things to do. And even though each of the little items on the list have a time right by those things, I still have it connected to my calendar so I can see, I can visually see just how much time I have in my day available to do these things. So this is what I think is really important to highlight is if you have a monthly calendar, like just a a regular Joe calendar. I mean, you know, just a month, a 30, 31 day month. Yeah. 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 And it's got dogs, you know, or something, right? It has this (laughs) cute little. The dogs are important. Actually, make sure there are dogs. That's what comes to my mind. I don't know where you go. My daughter has a calendar with dogs. So (laughs) that was, you know, the wall (laughs) calendar is what I'm trying to talk. That's what I No dragons and no cats, (laughs) only dogs. Well. And especially no potpourri. We have a Patreon listener that I know would disagree about the dragons, but. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm a big dragon fan. Uh, Yeah. So that, that's, I got dogs, got dogs, you know, wall, wall calendar with dogs. Um, But that is not going to be the most effective of calendar, right? Because it's just, it's just these little boxes. It's 30 boxes. It doesn't yeah. have the time split. So if you have that on your calendar and that's what you're using to direct your day, it, it, it's not going to be the most effective because you're going to see, oh, I have an appointment at two o'clock. But what you haven't put down is that you have to take your kids to school. You have to pick them up. You haven't three errands you have to run that day. Oh, and you have to work too. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're not seeing everything on those wall calendars. So, um, although they're cute. Yeah. You just don't get them. And you know, lunch with Amanda. I adore Amanda. She's a dear friend of mine. Uh, Amanda, we'll call her Amanda in quotes. And, uh, I had lunch with Amanda yesterday and usually Amanda and I will sit and we'll eat lunch for about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. And uh, then I'll be on my way. You know where we eat lunch? Uh, across town. And you know yeah. what happens in the space between my office and across town? Time passes. Right. It took me 45 minutes to get there and 45 minutes to get home. And suddenly that's an hour and a half of my day that was unaccounted for. And I do this stuff for a living. Yes. Right? Yes. And no one is immune from falling into these yeah. traps uh, occasionally. And yeah. you lose you you lose effectively a whole day, yeah, uh, yeah. because you you aren't thinking about those things. Yeah, so, no, it's so true. Huge. So, you know, definitely that you know lesson here, right, is to get to get the calendar that has the time broken up, um, and put your regular uh, routine type of things that you have to do, you know, during that time because that is not your time. Commute times is not your time. You can't right. schedule something when you have an hour commute. So you you got to put those things in your calendar, and so that's the connection is. Now now you're looking at your to-do list, which is hopefully not your brain dump. You know, at this point, um, you know, that needs to be broken down into, into some priorities and categories. But what you need to do is look at your to-do list then, look at your daily schedule and really decide what do I have time for? And that's one of the three things that you need to look at when you're prioritizing, right? So we've talked about um, the first thing is is easy. It's the deadlines, you know, when you're trying to figure out what to do, anything that's with a deadline or a real deadline is going to be probably the first thing that you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, second thing I've talked about is impact. What kind of impact does this have on you? How much impact does this have on other people? But the third criteria, 
criteria, which is what we're talking about right now, is how much time do you really have to do it? And you, if you only have an hour in between appointments, that is not the time for you to get started on a project that is complicated. It's ongoing. It takes a lot of focus. You can't be interrupted. Like that's not the time to do that. Right. And so Mm -hmm. you really have to pick and choose um, depending on, you know, what you have available that day. Um, and that's kind of, you know, really managing the expectations too, is anything that you, anytime you have more than one or two things on your list, when you, when you, especially when you have a busy day, pick one or two, th- I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I said uh, what I meant to say was if you so, have yeah. more, like if you have 10 things on your list and you have a busy day, we need to zero in on just making one or two things being a priority. Yes. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Big clarification. Big clarification. <laughs> well, and that's it. That's the massive to-do list that, uh, you know, when your your eyes are bigger than your stomach, so to speak, yeah. and, uh, and, and you try to chew too much. And uh, I, it is, uh, again... Uh, the the people I interact with who struggle with this are are people who tend to feel a great deal of shame about always being behind. Yes. And there is a way out of that. There is a way out of it. And it's if you are gentle with yourself and you ease your way into changing expectations of yourself and others' uh, expectations of you, it, it can work. It can work, but can you I have to say, slow down. I have to say what you a comment with what you just said. Um, the expectations that you think others have of you. And I see this a lot with the moms that I work with because they, they feel so much pressure to have, you know, certain things done by a certain time or they want things to be done for their families. And, and, uh, that's their perception of what they think they want. But in reality, uh, if you were to ask one of those kids, you know, if they really cared if this was done or not, they're not going to care, right? They're not even going to notice. They're going to just the be, ba- they're not even going to notice. <laughs> they're just going to be happy. That, Mom was home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're going to be happy that they're home. So I think it's yeah. also really taking a step back and, and what, you know, asking yourself, where is this, ex- where is the expectation coming from? And, you know, is it real? And, I, the the mother that I'm thinking of in um, in particular, I said, you know, it's great that you want to get all these things done, you know, before the kids get out of school, but they don't all have to be done at once. They don't all mm-hmm. have to be done by, you know, the day they come out. You you certainly, you know, can can spread it out a little bit so that you're not completely. Um, wearing yourself down and not having fun in the process. Like, you know, cause it's now just a chore when mm-hmm. it should be something that's kind of fun when you've got your kids coming home for the summer and you're thinking of activities and things that you want to do with them. And so, you know, I think that, um, that's important. And the other thing I was, I wanted to say just on the shame part is, is to remember the to-do list is just a, a time management tool. It doesn't define who you are or the kind of work that you're doing. Um, it's just a tool and it's a, it's a guide and, and you're doing the best you can. And like you said, give yourself grace and be kind. And we've said this before over and over again, the things that are on your to-do list are, are probably not life and death things. They can wait. And it's certainly not worth you beating yourself up over it. You know, it's just not worth it. Yeah. I I go back to my mantra of 2016, which I still say almost every day. Others stress is not my stress. Exactly. Others anxiety is not my anxiety. Yeah. And I have to remind myself of that. Yeah. Uh, that when people get themselves all wrapped up and uptight and upset at all hours and writing, you know, middle of the night, 2 a.m. emails about something that causes them not to be able to sleep, that should not interrupt my sleep 99.999% of the time. Right, right. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah. So. so something I want to attach in our show notes that we haven't talked about in a while is the daily worksheet that we yeah. put together several years ago. Um, and this is a good little handy worksheet. If you, if you know, I, obviously I want you to use your calendar and, you know, I want you to use the system that you have in place, but this, this little worksheet is really helpful on the really, really busy days. And it can at least give you a guide of maybe how to get started if you haven't built in that system yet. Um, but the, the worksheet is um, basically, 
split into 30 minute increments on the side or on one side of it. So you can put in your, your schedule and also the, the time blocking of things that you want to do and, and whatnot. But the, the best thing about it is you can put your priorities to the left. So you have your priorities and then you have your schedule and you're, you be able to, you, you can match them. You can match them and see what's mm-hmm. going to work and what's not. Um, so we'll put those in the, uh, daily sh- or I'm sorry, the, um, show notes. Um, and I was going to say something else. Oh, this is something that I find really helpful in my coaching is that ADDers are verbal processors. So if you have a friend, a spouse, um, somebody that you can talk to about organizing your thoughts and organizing your to-do list and kind of seeing is, is this manageable? Do you think this is realistic? That can be really helpful to hear yourself kind of talk through it and talk some, you know, talk with somebody else about it. So that's another suggestion for people to, to, to do, you know, and think about. I, I would add, I think that's brilliant. And I also, it sort of fills the same purpose. I, at the end of every event, like at the end of this particular podcast recording session, I'll go into day one and I'll add a quick entry, you know, what did we do? How did it go? Did, you know, how did, how long did it take us to do it? How long did it take for me to set up, you know, all the live stream stuff and prep? Mm-hmm. How, how long did it take all, me to do that? And, uh, you know, I've been finding myself at the end of the day, just flipping through the last few, you know, weeks of, of these kinds of writings to get an assessment. It, it helps me better estimate when I have a log of past projects that are similar. It helps yeah. me better estimate in the future. And so I can make better promises to the people who are counting on me to do the work. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that is, uh, that I find is very handy. Fine. You know, it doesn't have to, obviously I use the day one app, uh, on my Mac and on iOS, but you know, get a notebook uh, right, and just, right. just write yourself a little after every call, every conference call, I, I, you know, I don't know. There's all this talk about, you know, Comey's memos. I started thinking I could keep Pete's memos. Oh, Oh, I'm gonna start keep. I'm it took keeping me a second to, to figure out what I'm, you were saying. I'm, <laughs> okay, yes. Pizza. I'm all up in the memos, and you know what? <laughs> it's it's really helpful to write memos of things because when you do it right after the event, remember. your memory is most clear, and the more you remember it without writing it down, the more it changes in your head. So uh, sure. I find that that you know the things that I write down immediately following a particular event or a meeting or a call. Uh, I am better prepared the next time I need to do those things without that sort of degradation that comes with time in my own addled brain. That's awesome. Pete's Pete's. Me- Petey's memos. That's right. Petey's memos. It's going to be a new podcast. Petey's memos. <laughs> do, 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 do. What did you do today? <laughs> Just all acted out with Muppets. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I, I think that really helps. Uh, it really helps the scheduling part and the estimation part, which is a central point of failure for um, oh, yeah. you know, ADHD. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's tough. Okay. So I have something coming up that I want to talk about real quick. Let's talk about it. Do and it. I'm probably going to bring it up, you know, for the next few weeks because it's that important. Okay. So um, with summer right around the corner, as I was talking about, I want our listeners to know that I am going to continue the accountability coaching groups in the summer. So they will actually start in July and they will end in August. And it's going to be eight weeks long instead of 10 because it's a summer thing, right? Um, and I'll talk more about it kind of in the next few weeks, but I just want people to know that they are going to be available. And if you're interested in joining the wait list, just go to the website. We'll put put it in the show notes as well um, on uh, well, we'll give you a link on how to sign up for the wait list um, and you'll be the first to know when enrollment opens, which is probably going to be the beginning of June and, and enrollment will close at the end of June. Um, and so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there and give people some notice ahead of time that I'm going to be doing those in the summer as well. Outstanding. Those are great. I love the pivot to the accountability groups. I think that's uh, that. That's a great tool. Yeah. Great environment. Yes. Check it out. Accountability coaching. Fantastic. Ask, ask your your group. Is this too much for the day? Mm-hmm. They'll tell you. Believe it me. Speaks, they'll tell you. Right ya. here. It speaks <laughs> volumes. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, and it, you know, sometimes it's nice. I I feel like my experience yesterday was a nice little reminder. And so I've gone ahead and I booked out my next week of all my tasks. I did my next week planning today, and oh. I I have to tell you, I feel so good 
There, it yep. is such a rewarding sort of relief. This this show is always my sort of accountability buddy. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to yes. talk to you and remind me of all the stuff that I'm doing wrong oh, when I fall apart. Oh, no, that's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> it's good, in a good way, though, in a good way. Okay. Uh, this is great. Everybody, thank you so much for your time and attention. This has been a fantastic uh, conversation. We appreciate you taking part. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control the ADHD podcast.